The best of creation, the prophet of this glorious religion, the one who will give his intercession, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has stated, Indeed, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, he gave me this glad tidings. That whoever recites the root shrief upon you, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah Azza wa Jal sends mercy to him. And whoever sends salam salutations upon you, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah Azza wa Jal sends peace to him. So in love and devotion, the Prophet Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let's send the root upon him, inshaAllah Azza wa Jal. Salu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Now, everyone has a relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal is our creator. And I thought the way we act with Allah Azza wa Jal, the way we act in front of Allah Azza wa Jal in certain circumstances, there's a disease in the heart. And it's not being happy with the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, with what Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed to happen. And I wanted to go through just this little book here. It's called Bidayatul Hidayah, The Beginning of Guidance by Imam Ghazali, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. And this book is one of the shortest books that Imam Ghazali has written, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. This book is one of the most useful. One of the most useful books for the seekers of a successful and organized moral life. To put it simply, the book tells us how we should live our lives according to the commandments of Allah and the sunnah of his beloved Habib In here, if I just quickly go through the contents for yourselves, the first part is on obedience to Allah and it talks about the etiquette of waking up from sleep, the etiquette of wuzu, the etiquette of uh, the etiquette of staying home, the etiquette of setting out for the masjid, the etiquette of Staying inside the masjid until sunrise, the etiquette of the time from sunrise to midday, the etiquette of preparation for other prayers, the etiquette of sleep, the etiquette of Friday, the etiquette of fasting, etc. This tells us how we should be in our day to day lives. And there's one section here which talks about our relationship, the etiquette with Allah Azza wa Jal. With Allah Azza wa Jal. And I'm just going to read this to you because it opens up our eyes how we should be. How Imam Azali, rahmatullahi ta'ala, alayhi, he says that we should be with Allah Azza wa Jal. So Imam Azali, rahmatullahi ta'ala, alayhi, he starts with saying that know that your companion, the one who never parts from you, whether you are at home or you are traveling, whether you are asleep or you're awake, and indeed, in your life and also at your death is none other than your Lord Allah Azza wa Jal, your protector, your master, and your creator. So Imam Zali is saying, our companion at all times, no matter when, is Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal is always with us and always has been, always will be. Whenever you engage in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, in the remembrance of Him, Allah Azza wa is with you. Indeed, Allah Azza wa has said, Ana jalisu man dhakarani. Meaning, I am the companion of the one who engages in remembrance of me. This is what Allah Azza wa is saying. The one who does my dhikr, I will remember him. I will be his companion. Allah Azza wa says this. So we should try to stay in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa as much as possible and every single second of the day. Obviously for some, or for a lot of us, it, even for myself, it would be very, very hard to remain in the constant dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, constant remembrance. This is where the awliya, they have the special uh, gift that they're always aware that Allah Azza wa Jal is there. Always aware and would not want to do anything to displease him. And Imam Zali continues, he says, whenever your heart breaks with sorrow, over your shortcomings in fulfilling the rights of your Lord, indeed Allah Azzawajal is at that time your friend and constant companion. As your Lord Azzawajal, he says, 
ana inda al-munkasira qulubuhum min ajli i am with those hearts which are broken for my sake allah azawajal is with those people whose hearts are broken for the pleasure of allah azawajal so when we do true repentance true tawbah when we cry to Allah Azawajal, ask Him to forgive us for the sins that we commit on a daily basis, that's when Allah Azawajal is with us as well. Allah Azawajal's mercy is too much. I say this every single week, Allah Azawajal's mercy is too much. But Allah Azawajal here is saying that the one who comes with a broken heart, I am his companion as well. So Allah Azawajal here, in the first two paragraphs that I've just read, is showing how Allah Azawajal says that he'll be a companion of us if we do certain things if we stay in the zikr of Allah Azawajal, and when we do true repentance but how again should we take Allah Azawajal as a companion Imam Zali continues if you knew Allah Azawajal truly as he should be known you would take him as your companion and leave people aside only Allah Azawajal would be your companion and you wouldn't have a need for any person in this world Allah and then if you are not able to do this all the time, meaning stay in the zikr of Allah Azawajal, the remembrance of Allah Azawajal all times, then beware of leaving your entire night and day. Imam Zali warns. Beware of leaving your entire night and day. Devoid the time spent alone with your master. Therein to taste the sweetness of companionship with Allah Azawajal. For this, you must learn the manners of companionship with Allah Azawajal. To taste the sweetness of intimate dialogue with Allah Azawajal. This is what Imam Azali says. That, fair enough, we are normal people. We can't stay in the constant zikr of Allah Azawajal from day to night. But we should have a specific time where we can speak with Allah Azawajal. And we already do. We already have that specific time. If I asked you, what's that specific time? Namaz. Namaz. Namaz, five times a day we have a specific time. So again, moving on from last week. Well, and the week before when I was saying about namaz How we stand in the holy court of Allah Azawajal Five times a day This is what Imam Ghazali Can also mean from this That At least during your entire night and day You have five times where you spend alone With your creator, with your master With your lord And then you can have The sweetness of intimate dialogue With Allah Azawajal Nothing better, no better feeling There is none and now Imam Azali explains what the manners are with Allah, what the etiquettes are, how we should be with Allah. The manners of this company are that we keep the eyes downcast, that we have full concentration in Allah, especially during the month, especially during the month. That we remain silent, that we have stillness of the limbs, that we hasten to fulfill his command, that we hurry. To fulfill Allah Azawajal's commands. That we avoid prohibited things. We avoid haram. Minimal objection to what Allah Azawajal decrees for you. So the topic for today. Inshallah we're going to go into more detail. What Allah Azawajal has decreed for you. Having no objection towards it. Constant remembrance. The constant zikr of Allah Azawajal. Persevering in contemplation. Meaning thinking about what you have done. In recent days, in weeks, months, years, to please Allah Azawajal, or what have you done to displease Allah Azawajal? Giving preference to the truth, i.e., by to Allah Azawajal, by turning to Him over all else. Despairing of created beings, humility with extreme reverence in front of your Lord Allah Azawajal. A feeling of brokenness that we are not complete unless Allah Azawajal give us, gives us completion. That we have modesty in front of Allah Azawajal. That we try to have peace of mind without resorting to any strategy for earning livelihood. By having confidence in the guarantee of Allah Azawajal, that Allah Azawajal will provide sustenance for us. He'll provide us with, risk, with wealth. Allah Azawajal has guaranteed this. But what's not guaranteed, as, as I've mentioned before, is Allah Azawajal's forgiveness. So it says here, don't worry. About Allah's Azawajal's guarantee to you. Don't worry about wealth. Allah Azawajal will guarantee that to you. Worry about gaining His forgiveness. And finally, have complete trust 
in the grace of Allah Azawajal, knowing with certainty that the best choice will always be the one that Allah Azawajal makes. So that's the final one of all these etiquettes, all of them, they should constitute your distinguishing emblem in all your nights and days, Imam Ghazali concludes. They are the spiritual courtesies of companionship with a friend who never leaves your side. Even as every one of creation will part company with you at one time or another, Allah will not leave you ever. He is your constant companion. This is Imam Ghazali's beautiful, beautiful introduction into having the etiquettes with Allah Azawajal, the Most High, the Most Mighty. It's when you think about it, when you listen to that, how we should be with Allah Azawajal, how we should act, we are far from this. We are far from this. And another book I have here, another beautiful one. It's called Purification of the Heart. Originally, this book is a translation and commentary of Imam Mawlouz. Matharat al Qulub, and that book was a poem about the diseases of the heart, the sins of the heart. This, this book is very, it's what, 200 pages long nearly, and it talks about different diseases of the heart. And again, reading from this displeasure with the divine decree, poem verses 106 and 107. Imam Mawlud, he writes, the displeasure with the divine decree occurs when one resists Allah Azawajal in what he has decreed. Meaning that when someone is not happy with what has happened to him or shows his displeasure about what Allah Azawajal has put in his destiny. For instance, saying, I did not want this happening to me or what did I do to deserve this suffering? This is what Imam Mawlud has written. And then Shaykh Hamza Yusuf, he goes on for commentary for this beautiful two verses of the poem. The Imam speaks next of displeasure with the divine decree. With the divine decree of Allah Azawajal. For instance, when people say, I didn't want this happening to me. What did I do to deserve this? Why me? I didn't deserve this to happen to me at all. These statements is very familiar to us all. We've all heard this and we've all done this, unfortunately. Many people, they live with a certain bitterness because of the proverbial cards that they've been dealt with in life. They're not happy that, again, the cards that they've dealt with, they've been dealt with by Allah's of a joke, is not good enough for them. They feel that it's not enough, I need more. Why is this happening to me? Why am I going through these trials and tribulations? This is what people think. And it's not, over, it's not just over big things when, let's say, someone passes away or when your house has been robbed. Sometimes at those moments, people have the best of patience. They have the best of uh, realizing this is a test from Allah Azawajal. It's the little moments. It's the little moments where we fail. We begin to fail. So for example, you might be thinking, what do you mean by little moments? I'll give you some big examples, but little ones. For example, I was just locked outside in the masjid and I was out in the cold. That's a trial and tribulation. And if I had gone out for flip sakes, what's going on? The masjid's not open, no one's here to open it. Why? That would be the wrong action, the wrong response. Or for example, when you've lost your keys, flip sakes, where's my keys? Where's my keys gone? This is showing displeasure. Even though not directly, we're showing displeasure to the decree of Allah Azawajal. This is where we have the biggest problems. You've just tripped over, you just kicked your foot against the table. The little moments is when we show our displeasure. And depending on what we say in that moment is a very, very good thing. What can happen to us? We can get so much sin for what we say. Why does that have to happen to me? You've all heard it. We've all gone through it as well, unfortunately. But it's time to open our minds and realize that that act of tribulation, me being locked outside the for example, who knows if I'd come inside to the masjid before then, something might have happened. Maybe there was, who knows, maybe there were jinns inside in the masjid. You know, I was kept outside, you know, I could have been attacked. Who knows? Obviously, by Allah's decree, I was locked outside of the masjid. By Allah's decree that I lost my keys. Who knows, if I got my keys straight away and drove at that moment, there would have been a car crash for me. Um, you would have been saved from calamity and you just had this little trial and tribulation. 
of losing your keys. Or you're late, up, you're late for work, you're stuck in traffic. Who knows if you had, there was no traffic, there'd be an accident for you. So much comes in the destiny of, in our destiny, in the decree of Allah that we do not know. We can't see the future or what had been decreed. We can't see that, but we have to trust in Allah that what has actually happened is only betterment for us, is only goodness for us. Because it could have saved us from something much, much worse. So Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, he goes on to say that people have this bitterness in their hearts because of what they've been dealt in within life. We cannot choose the trials and tribulations that fall upon us, but we can choose our response to the trials of life, which are inevitable, which will happen. Allah will test the one he loves, and we have to show that we love him back by our response to these trials and tribulations. His decree, Allah's decree, our destiny, is but a command from Allah's wajal. It's mentioned multiple times in the Holy Quran, kun fayakun, meaning be and it is. This clearly shows that everything, our destiny, Allah's wajal's decree, is but a commandment from Allah's wajal. So we should be happy with the commandments of Allah's wajal, happy with what He has decreed for us. No matter how hard it may be, who knows this could, this could be the means of you entering Jannah as well, inshaAllah, so which will by uh, virtue of you staying patient on this trial and tribulation. Imam Abu Hassan has said that there is a quality in people that most people are unaware of, yet it consumes good deeds. And that quality is displeasure with Allah's divine decree. This disease of the heart. This disease of the heart, it consumes good deeds. Written here by Imam Abu Hassan. So we have to be very, very wary. Because who knows, just by virtue of this disease, all of our good deeds have been burnt away and gone. And on the day of judgment, when we think we might have a decent amount, we can never have enough. <coughs> and we've got nothing because of this disease of our hearts. So... <coughs> Is very important, you know, learning about the disease of the heart is also for us alone upon every single Muslim. It's for us to know the diseases of the heart. So this is why I have this book at home for myself, Purification of the Heart. It's a <coughs> So this book is very important. I think everyone should buy this and read through it. It's in very complicated English. Uh, I myself unfortunately only got a C in GCSE English uh, but there is a lot of complicated English in here for myself anyway obviously other people might be more knowledgeable than me in the field of English uh, but it can be a little bit hard to understand but inshallah it will improve your English and uh, we'll always have uh, Google uh, definitions and the dictionary so the God conscious people the only Ikram how did they deal with their trials and tribulations? I mentioned a little bit before that they're always happy with the command of Allah no matter what any trial or tribulation they face, they're always happy with the decree of Allah If you look at again the seerah of al sifaq the fact that he faced trials and tribulations every single day, that he would go without food to go against his body and his nafs, Again, he'd be happy with the decree of Allah that this is happening to me. That there is no food for me. Or that when he went without water for a year, when he went without food and water for a year, Hosea Park would be happy with the decree of Allah that this could be a means for him getting into Jannah. Hosea Park, he said that one night he had to do also 40 times, not turn a mission of Lord 40 times in one night. And every single one of those times he got into the cold river in the winter, the cold river and did also 40 times in one night. What well, a person who is a normal person like us, we have it one time in one night and we have to go uh, bathe in the cold river in winter. We'd be like, oh, now man, why does this have to happen now? It's cold, I can't get in there now. Also, got, also found it 40 times. And he's happy with the decree of Allah. As well. And he faces through this test as well. This is how the Odi Aikram, their etiquettes and their behaviour with Allah is. They're happy no matter what with the decree of Allah. 
So Shaykh Hamza Yusuf goes on to say that when asked about what their Lord has given them, they say that all of it is good. Because they say this out of the knowledge of the nature of this world is a temporary crucible, temporary trial of, and of purification for the soul. And then we enter Jannah inshallah or Jannah hereafter. Because of this elevated understanding that the Awliya Ikram have, they are patient with any affliction, any trial that they face in this world. But for the worldly people, there's only this world and this understanding creates a blind spot to the wondrousness of Allah's creation and His signs so on throughout. We become blind to this and we become unhappy with Allah's decree. Goes on to state that there's four possible states that a person is currently living in, in this world. Number one, that a person is receiving blessings from Allah. Number two, that a person is receiving trials and tribulations from Allah. Number three, that a person is living in obedience to Allah. And number four, that a person is either living in disobedience to Allah. Each condition invites a certain response from a person. When Allah bestows blessings, the response should be that we show gratitude to Allah. So I mentioned uh, in Jummah yesterday that we should show our gratitude, show our thankfulness to Allah for all the blessings that He has given to us. And how do we show this thankfulness? One, obviously, by lip service, by our mouths, saying thank you to Allah for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon me, whether little or small, or what I think is small or little. But secondly, with our actions, with our actions, making sure that we do what Allah just commanded us. Stay away from Allah, uh, stay away from what Allah has commanded us to. Fulfill the actions that are necessary upon us. Fulfill the actions that are sunnah upon us and nafil upon us. This is the nafili actions are the ones that bring us closest to Allah. Yes, we do what's commanded, but what we do extra. What we do extra for Allah is what gets us closer to Allah. To Allah. That's what gets us closer. The nafli actions. And this is what Shaykh Hamza used to say. To show gratitude to Allah, do those nafli actions. Do the sunnah actions that our Rasulullah used to do. Not just the furs and the wajibahs. Not just the obligatory and necessary things. But the things that would get you closest to Allah. This is how we should show gratitude to Allah. The response of a person who's going through trial number two, who's going through trial and tribulation, is one thing only. Patience, sort of. Showing patience upon any trial and tribulation that you have. In the law of Indeed, Allah is with those people who are patient. Indeed, Allah is with those people who are patient. Any trial, tribulation you have, stay patient. Say Allah has decreed this for me, so it's only goodness. No matter what has happened, whether you've hit, again hit your foot on the table, you've lost your key, you're stuck in traffic, something big might have happened, your house might have got robbed, someone might have passed away. Be happy with the decree of Allah because everything is in the possession of Allah and when that thing is taken away from you, Allah has just taken his loan back. He's just taken his loan back. From you. So deal with patience. And through patience is when you get closeness to Allah through calamity. This is again how we get closer to Allah. Now, when a person is in the state of obedience, one must recognize that obedience to Allah is a blessing from Allah. Again, express gratitude, express thankfulness that Allah has brought you towards Him, has Put it in your decree, in your destiny that you are worshipping him. That you are stood there in the masjid, reading your namaz five times a day in the first row. Allah has decreed this for you, so be happy and thankful. And pray that Allah keeps you on the path of obedience to him. Keep it always in your du'as that Allah guides you and protects you on this path because the shaitan and nafs are always your enemies. And they never go away. They never go away. They're always your enemies looking for that moment of weakness for themselves. The moment they try to attack is when you go through a calamity or tribulation to say the things of why this happened to me, why me? I don't deserve this happening to me. 
are for fit sakes. That's when the shaitan and the nafs come. But if you stay silent at that moment and stay patient, inshallah, Allah will reward you so much that you don't even know the reward that you will gain. And you'll see that in the hereafter of the on the scales, inshallah. Azawajal. It will be a reward, a transaction, as has been mentioned, without any fail for yourselves. That it will only be there as a reward for you, and it won't be refunded. And the final one, on the state where someone is in a state of disobedience. People have to realize that it's a dangerous position to be in. It's a dangerous position to be in, and when someone realizes they're in a state of obedience, they must reflect on the final day and the hereafter and of the grave. Because, like I've mentioned before, the next second is not guaranteed for a person. The next moment is not guaranteed for any person at all. And when a person realizes and he thinks about the Akhirah and basically goes through his head, what am I doing? What am I doing? Allah is my Lord. You know, He's given me all these blessings and I'm disobeying Him. How can I disobey my Lord who's given me everything? On the day of judgment, He's the only one who can save me through His mercy, inshallah, I go to Jannah. How can I gain His mercy if I'm disobedient to Allah? Yes, okay, sometimes it is hard for us, but I'd rather appear in front of my Lord as an obe- a, a trying, obedient slave than someone who is disobedient. This is one of the attacks of the shaitan as well. The shaitan will come into your head and he'll say, you know, everything's decreed. Destiny has already been written. It doesn't matter whether you do good or bad right now. It's already been written for you. So why not just leave it and continue doing bad? That's what the shaitan will say to you whilst you're in a state of disobedience. But what you have to say to this is that Allah is my Lord. I don't know in the hereafter whether Allah because of this disobedience, he might send me to Jahannam. But I have to have hope in Allah's mercy that he'll forgive me. But I need to appear in front of my Lord as a person who has at, at least tried, tried to be obedient to Allah's wajal. Because that is far better than me not trying at all. And appearing in front of Allah's wajal on that day as a disobedient slave. We must try and strive. This is how we get close to Allah Azza This is inshallah how we get Allah Azza mercy and forgiveness upon us. So that's the four stages of how a person can be in and what they should think of. Yes, we do forget. Yes, we do falter. But we have to realize we get signs. Allah Azza gives us signs. I see myself sometimes. I'll just go for Instagram and there'll be something there. Return to Allah Azza wa Allah Azza is most forgiving. This is what we have to do. We have to realize these signs. And realize another minute is not guaranteed. I need to sort myself out. And this is how, inshallah, Azawajal, you become closer to Allah. Azawajal. This is how you become happy with what Allah Azawajal has decreed. Now, some stories about decree and some famous examples. So you look at Sayyidina Ibrahim, alayhi salam, when he was thrown into the fire by his enemies. What did Sayyidina Ibrahim say that moment? Does anyone know? Anyone know? Didn't you read the last one down on it? That's mm. what he wills then. Mm. So Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, when he was being thrown into the fire, the fire didn't touch him. The fire didn't hurt him. Sayyidina Jibrail came to Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, and said, should I, not, should I not help you? Should I help you whilst you're in the fire? I can extinguish it. But Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, uh, asked Sayyidina Jibrail salam, who is the one who put me into this fire? And Sayyidina Jibrayya Islam answered, Your enemies. And then Sayyidina Ibrahim Islam asked another question. Who put that thought into their minds? Who put that thought into their minds to throw me into the fire? Sayyidina Jibrayya Islam replied, Allah Azawajal. So if Allah Azawajal has put that thought into their ideas and put their actions into place, then I have full belief in Allah so just that the fire won't hurt me and it'll be cool. <laughs> this is so if we were to be thrown into fire, we'd be screaming and thinking, Oh my gosh, what's going on? But saying that Ibrahim, obviously because he has a prophet status as well. 
the status of uh, Anbiya. Allah made the fire not burn. But he had full belief in the, his destiny, in the decree of Allah that nothing will happen to me. I'll be fine. Allah is protecting me. He'll keep me safe from even this fire. This is how the Prophet والسلام, and the, the, again the God conscious people, the Odi Quran, how they are happy with the decree of Allah. So it's easy to say I'm being thrown to the fire, no great. What is going to happen to me? Flip sakes. Can't be saved now. But Ibrahim Islam had full belief in Allah and he was happy with the decree of Allah so this would happen. This is the difference. And one more story that's famous. Famous in the Quran, the Holy Quran. And when I was going through this book, this is what gave me the idea, the story, for today's topic. It's the story of Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam in the stomach of the fish. This book is called Quranic Wonders. And this has many, many stories. It's fascinating, as it says here, a fascinating book consisting of Quranic parables and marvels and stories. It's a beautiful book. I would try to read one story every day after Fajr. It's a good routine to be in. And reading this, I'll just read to you, inshallah. Allah Azza sent Sayyidina Yunus as a prophet for the guidance of the people of the city called Nainawa. It was a big city of a place called Mosul. The people of the area, they were idol worshippers. And they were indulged in unbelief and polytheism. Sayyidina Yunus a.s. commanded them to abandon idol worshipping. As the prophets, they were sent to this job. And embrace the true faith. But these people refuted the Prophet of Allah and denied to embrace the true faith due to their insolence and wickedness. Sayyidina Yunus a.s. warned that soon, very soon, a divine torment would strike them. And after listening to this warning, the people of the city consulted one another. Now Sayyidina Yunus a.s. he's never told a lie. Sayyidina Yunus a.s. no matter what he believes in, he's never told a lie. Never told a lie. So if he islam stays in the city overnight, then it means there is no danger. Or if he islam does not spend the night in the city, then we should expect the onset of divine torment. Because Allah doesn't want to put his prophet islam with the people when they're receiving their punishment. So for example, Noah's Ark, uh, Prophet Nuh islam he was told that the flood would come and he had to build an ark to be safe from this punishment. Same thing here, saying that Yunus alayhi salam, he'd be safe from this punishment. So the thinking was that if he stays in the city, then we have to be wary because divine punishment may be coming. And saying that Yunus alayhi salam has never told a lie. So we have to be very, very wary. So at night, the people saw that saying that Yunus alayhi salam, he's left the city and he's not there. He's not in the city anymore. And indeed in the morning, the signs of divine torment appeared because black clouds started emerging from all four sides and darkness fell over the whole city with a smoke from everywhere. Witnessing this, the people of the city realized that the torment will now definitely strike them. There's nowhere to run now. There's nowhere to run. They had to accept the fate. Therefore, in the quest of Sayyidina Yunus Islam, the people started searching frantically for him. But Sayyidina Yunus Islam could not be found far and wide. Now the people of the city, they became even more terrified. Therefore, they all took their women, children, along with their cattle, wearing threadbare and torn clothes, and went to the jungle crying and repenting. They went to the jungle crying and repenting. They sincerely committed to, the, to embrace the faith of Sayyidina Yunus a.s. Husbands, they separated from their wives, and mothers separated from their children, and all of them engaged in seeking absolution, and were weeping bitterly in the court of Allah Azawajal. They were asking Allah Azawajal to forgive them. And they were crying in the holy court. They started seeking pardon for all the violations regarding the mutual rights between Allah Azawajal by committing shirk. In short, all of them repented sincerely. And they promised Allah Azawajal they had firm belief in the message of Allah Azawajal brought to them by Sayyidina Yunus a.s. Allah Azawajal did mercy on the sincere repenting of the inhabitants of the city and the torment it was taken away. So because of this repentance, the city all became Muslim, which is beautiful, which is something that is goodness, only goodness for them. The torment was taken away and then the clouds, the smoke disappeared, all the people came back to their city and they resumed living with peace and comfort. 
worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal describes this event in the Holy Quran in the following words. فَلَوْلَا كَانَتْ قَرْيَةٌ أَمَنَتْ فَنَافَعَهَا إِيمَانُهَا إِلَّا قَوْمَ يُنَاسِ لَمَا آمَنُوا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُمْ عَذَابَ الْخِزِي فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَتْعَنَهُمْ إِلَّا حِيمٌ So if only had there been one town that believed and its faith would have benefited it. Yes, the people of Yunus. When they accepted faith, we remove the disgraceful punishment in the life of this world from them and let them enjoy for a precise time. And this is from Surah Yunus itself. This is how famous the story is. The Quran has a separate surah for this story. It means that it does not benefit the people to embrace, once they've embraced the faith of Allah Azza wa Jal, that the divine torment commence. It does not befit our people when they believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, that the divine torment continue. But despite the clouds of divine torment, the people of Sayyidina Yusuf, that it was withdrawn from them, upon them, embracing the true faith. It's mentioned in Tabarani that when the signs of divine punishment were at one set, onset of the city of Nainawa and saying that Yusuf Islam was not found by the people, even after, after their thorough search, the people of the city became worried and they approached the famous religious scholar of the city who was a faithful believer of Islam and he was a spiritual luminary of those times. They all entreated him and he advised them to supplicate after reciting the following invocation. Ya hayu la hayya. وَيَا حَيُّ يُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى وَيَا حَيُّ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ Therefore the people, they recited this invocation, this du'a, this wazifa. After reciting it, then the torment was withdrawn, it was taken away. After reciting this invocation, this is how powerful such invocation of du'as are in the courts of Allah However, in the same context, there's a different reporting by the famous muhaddith Miraculous saint saying that for they have been Iyad rahmatullahi ta'ala That the invocation by virtue of which the torment of the city of Nainama was shunned away was Allahumma inna dhunubana qad azumat wa jallat wa anta a'zamu wa ajallu fa'al binna ma anta ahluhu wa la ta'al binna ma nahnu ahluhu However, after the withdrawal of this torment, so if you get this book, you'll be able to read these du'as and learn these du'as to read in a time of tribulation. To read our time of tribulation to inshallah make it easier for ourselves. <clears throat> However, after the withdrawal of the torment, when Sayyidina Yunus salam, arrived in the city, he salam, did not find any symptoms of torment on the city. So Sayyidina Yunus salam, he returned, but he didn't see any signs of divine torment. So the people asked him to join the, the people back into the city. He salam, replied, how can I go back to my people? I have left the city after revealing the news of divine torment to them, but it did not happen. Now those people will kill me considering me to be a liar. <coughs> Out of anger, Sayyidina Yunus Islam, he left the city and he embarked on a boat. When the boat reached in the middle of the sea, it stopped. <coughs> According to an established tradition, those times only that boat would jam in the middle of an area that carries some fugitive slave. So they carry a fugitive. Therefore, the passengers, they did a ballot and the name of Sayyidina Yunus Ali Islam, it came out. The passengers threw him into the sea and departed when they realized that he was a fugitive running away from his city. When Sayyidina Yunus Ali Islam fell down into the water, a fish swallowed him and he Ali Islam became confined in the stomach of the fish where there was utter darkness. Under these circumstances, he Ali Islam commenced invoking La ilaha illa anta. Subhanaka inni kuntu minal ghalimeen There is no God except you, Ya Allah SWT And all pure are you Indeed, I am from the people of sinners I am from the people who are not part of uh, the Salihin Because we believe that the Prophet SAW are ma'asun Meaning that they do not have the ability to commit sin And they never did commit sin By virtue of this invocation Allah Azawajal blessed him freedom from his dark cell and the fish ejected him out of her mouth at the bank of the sea. He Ali Islam had grown weak by that time, grown weak. And by the grace of Allah Azawajal, the plants 
of gold grew there. And he alayhi salam used to take the rest under his shade. Afterwards, when he alayhi salam regained some energy, he alayhi salam went back to his people, and all the people treated him with almost love and reverence and embraced their faith onto him as well. The Holy Quran has mentioned this wonderful event of Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam in the following words. وَإِنَّا يُنَسْ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And indeed, Yunus is one of the noble prophets. إِذْ أَذَقَى إِلَى الْفُلْكِ فُلْكِ الْمَحْحُونَ When he left towards the loaded ship, then he draws lots, and he became of those who were pushed into the sea. فَسَاهَ مَا فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُذْحَضِينَ The fish then swallowed him, and he blamed himself for not waiting for Allah's commandment. And he had not been those who glorify Allah Azawajal. And had he not been those who glorify Allah Azawajal, he would have remained in his belly till the day when all will be raised. We then put him ashore on a plane and he was sick. And we grew a tree of gold as a shelter above him. And we sent him as a messenger towards a hundred thousand people. In fact, more. Meaning, we sent Meaning, we sent the messenger towards a hundred thousand people, in fact even more. We therefore allow them to enjoy life for a while. This is what's in the Holy Quran in Surah as safar So the Holy Quran is telling us this story. <coughs> and we must take morals of the story. I've not just read the story for just any reason. It's morals from the story that we have to take away. That from the event of the people of Nehru Noah, the moral lesson we get is that whenever any calamity strikes any nation in the form of torment, then the only remedy is to engage in supplications, in dua to Allah Azawajal, after repenting to Allah Azawajal. When we go through any calamity, we must return to Allah Azawajal. Do tawbah for the sins that we committed, because it could be by those sins that we receive this trial and tribulation. And then we must do dua to Allah Azawajal to lift the torment, lift the trial, lift the tri tribulation upon us. So that Allah Azawajal can make it easy for us, bring us back to the correct path, to the path, to the status of obedience. When I was talking about the four stages before, Allah Azawajal bless us, Allah Azawajal keep us safe from trials and tribulations, and Allah Azawajal give us or make us in the state of obedience at all times. So, bless for Allah Azawajal. He will show his blessings and the torment will be withdrawn. Number two. From the heart trembling trials faced by Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam, we learn how Allah Azza puts his chosen people into trial. Not any person, not just any person, also his chosen people into trials and tribulations. But when these chosen people they observe patience. They observe patience and do not become negligent in the remembrance of Allah Azza despite being struck with troubles, then Allah Azza arranges means of their salvation from the unseen that are beyond imagine. Says it here. That if we stay patient in times of calamity and troubles, Allah Azawajal will arrange the means of our salvation from the unseen that are beyond our comp comprehending. Beyond our, beyond our comprehension. Beyond our imagination. That's how Allah Azawajal helps us. If we stay patient at those times, if we do not say for Philip's sake, oh, why me? What's going on? Why is this happening? But we stay patient to Allah Azawajal. We do dua to Allah Azawajal to make it easy for us. We do dua Allah Azawajal to Allah Azawajal that we stay in the constant zikr to Him. We must ponder over the fact that when the people of the boat flew Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam into the sea, were there any means? Was there any means for Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam to guarantee his survival and his safety at that point? There was not. He had to have firm belief that Allah Azawajal would keep him safe. At this moment, again, if we're put into the middle of sea, what would a normal person do? What would a normal person do? We would complain. Now, why is this happening now? What's going on? But if we are firm and we agree 
We have no objection to the decree of Allah Azawajal. We do not have that disease in our heart. We are happy with what Allah Azawajal has destined for us. Then we will be saved by a means that is not in our imagination. <coughs> then the fish is swallowed, Sayyidina Yunus Ali Islam. Who is the savior of Sayyidina Yunus Ali Islam's life? Allah Azawajal. When he Ali Islam invoked Ayat Karima, under those circumstances, Allah Azawajal kept him alive and safe even inside the stomach of the fish. Even inside the stomach of the fish. Moreover, Allah Azawajal rescued him from the stomach of the fish towards the field. Afterwards, Allah Azawajal bestowed him with good health and peace and took him back to his native land. More than 100,000 people embraced the right path by virtue of his preaching. Just that story there. Wah. I'll say that Yunus of it's not just normal people, this is our prophets of how they acted in trials and tribulations and the goodness that they received. If only we were even like an atom like them, even like an atom, an iota of the belief that they have in Allah so much like them, that we are happy with Allah so much decree no matter what happens to us. This is staying away from the disease of the heart, which is not being happy or showing displeasure to the decree of Allah of what has happened to him. Now to finish off, <coughs> inshallah, I'm just going to read a couple of hadith. In terms of our reliance on Allah, tawakul, tawakul. that's the good quality that every moment, every believer should have. Tawakul. Because tawakul keeps you safe or keeps you aware of Allah and I'm trying to think of the correct words here but it's uh, failing my mind right now and um, when a moment of calamity happens if a person has tawakul that they have a reliance on Allah then they realize that this is coming from Allah none other than Allah is doing this to me and I should be happy with this because who knows this might be a means of my sins being forgiven of a bigger calamity being stopped of me getting into Jannah inshallah I'm Suhaib qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Hazrat Suhaib radiallahu ta'ala reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said ajaba li amri mu'mini mu'mini anna amrahu is remarkable for a believer that in every affair there is good for him. And this applies only to a believer. If happiness reaches him, he gives thanks to Allah And if it and it turns out to be good for him. But if a misfortune befalls him and he shows endurance, he shows patience, then this will turn out to be good for him as well. Hadith of Rasulullah so stating here that everything that I've just mentioned, everything that I've just mentioned <coughs> comes true here. That when a person stays patient, that's when it is good for you in times of badness, in times of calamity. But we, we must not forget as well in times of goodness, when everything is khushi, when everything is good for us, when we are in the state of obedience, when we are receiving blessing, we must always stay as well in the zikr of Allah because this is the time when we can also be most vulnerable. We think we are one of Allah's blessed people. We start to think that shaitanic whispers start coming into our mind and then we'll be led astray. So it's very, very important that we always stay in the zikr of Allah Azawajal to keep this disease of the heart away from us, to be happy with the decree of Allah Azawajal no matter what happens to us. So I pray that Allah Azawajal guides us, that we stay in the constant zikr of Allah Azawajal and His Lord Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and just speaking about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you read through his seerah and you see how much trials and tribulations that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went through. You see how much 
pain, torture and suffering that Rasulullah went through. And yet, he never once wavered. Never once wavered and always stayed patient to Allah Wow. It is something special. And it's only the fitting of, of Allah's Habib And we must try and follow the actions of the Rasulullah We must try and follow his footsteps. There's many, many times where through trials and calamity, Rasulullah observed patience as a model for us to follow, as a key to opening up doors towards Jannah. Rasulullah has given us this, and we must act upon it, and we must follow his his ways, his traditions, his sunnah, and then we can be successful, inshallah. Ameen, Jai Nabi Lameen, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi